This is something enormous. It is about a final control. And is, it's the United States saying, there may be another power in the world, but we will be the ultimate power. Quite explicitly, the US and the EU are saying that they want these new trade agreements to form the blueprint, the template for all future trade deals. And that means they're rewriting the rules of the global economy, and that means for everybody. Once signed, it will cement a key part of the US government's plan to create a new global bloc that will ensure the dominance of its largest companies. And to understand why, we need to go back to the 1950s. After the Second World War, the United States accounted for half of the world's economy. Its influence was unmatched by any country, and it was able to write the early rules of international trade to its advantage. The World Trade Organization was created in this context, and the US dictated rules that favored American business. But as economies like China and India joined the WTO, it became a more democratized arena, and the US found it harder to control its decision making. At the WTO, at its Doha rounds, uh, India spoke up and Brazil spoke up, and the US lost control. I think it's uh, no use uh, beating around the bush. Uh, this uh, meeting has uh, collapsed. The US felt it needed a new strategy to maintain its global dominance. So in the classical American style, they went big. To bypass the WTO, they're creating the biggest international agreements that the world has ever seen. They're called the three big T's. The Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP, and the Trade and Services Agreement, or TISA and they're all being negotiated in secret right now. We only found out when WikiLeaks uh, was able to leak parts of them. And what's interesting is when you look across all of these deals, whether it be TTIP, TPP or TISA, China is excluded, but also Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa, they're all excluded because those are the emerging economies. What uh, is not often understood is that these agreements are part of a geopolitical war. Uh, this is a new war which is taking place between the United States and China. Uh, the United States is very scared of the rise of China, so it has moved uh, to militarily encircle it uh, through what is called the pivot to Asia, and now it's moving on to doing that economically. The basic idea which comes across from reading US strategy papers is the construction of a new grand enclosure. And to put inside this grand enclosure, the United States, 51 other countries, 1.6 billion people, and two thirds of global GDP. Uh, to integrate uh, Latin America away from Brazil and towards the United States, to integrate Southeast Asia away from China and towards the United States, and to integrate Western Europe, pulling it away uh, from Eurasia as a whole and towards the Atlantic. Of the three big T's, WikiLeaks has revealed four chapters of the TPP, which affects 12 countries in the Americas and Southeast Asia. We also obtained and released the core text of TISA, which affects 52 countries, including the EU. But nearly all of TTIP is still secret. Nobody knows about what's being negotiated in our name. So you have these far-reaching deals which are going to completely change the face of our economies and our societies. And yet, even elected parliamentarians know nothing about it. The world's biggest corporations don't have the same problem. They have been receiving VIP access from day one, and have had abundant influence in the negotiations. People, the likes of you and I, are excluded. Governments, to a great extent, are excluded. Those who are included are the multinational corporations. These agreements are basically corporate ownership agreements. The funny thing about free trade agreements, as we understand them, is they often have nothing to do with trade in the sense of the mutual lowering of tariffs. What they're about is enshrining 
an investor rights regime in the respective countries and ensuring that corporations can run wild in the respective economies with very, very little regulation or impingement by government or authorities. These treaties will have huge, huge implications for literally almost every critical issue that an individual citizen or community would care about. Health, education, the environment, uh, privacy, uh, access to medicines, I mean the list could go on. One of the most criticised aspects is a system called the Investor State Dispute Settlement, or ISDS. It's a secretive international tribunal that allows companies to sue states over virtually anything that they can claim affects their investment. If a protest affects their profits, they can sue. If laws affect their, the, their profits, they can sue. If um, uh, new regulations might impact uh, where, where or what they want to do with their money, they can sue. This is a new power which will be handed over to US corporations to sue the governments of Europe in a parallel judicial system which is available to them alone. So people have no access to it, domestic firms have no access to it, governments have no access to it. It's just there for foreign investors, in this case US corporations. Based on ISDS history, critics argue that European state sovereignty and democracy are at serious risk. Previous lawsuits include Swedish company Vattenfall, suing the German state for $3.7 billion for phasing out nuclear energy. British American Tobacco sued Australia for passing a law limiting cigarette advertising. The French company Veolia sued Egypt for raising the minimum wage. What is so scary about this is that corporations want to lock in their power. So they not only want increased power, but they want to make it impossible for sovereign governments to reverse the changes which are going to give them power. So for example, with TTIP, if it passes with ISDS in it, the privatisation of the National Health Service, which is happening in the UK, can never be reversed. What is democratic about an enormous um, imposition of power on countries whose citizens have no way of knowing what's going on, of debating it, or influencing their government in its decision. Um, that's anti-democratic. The history of these agreements shows that they're very difficult to change unless people can see what's in them. And that's why they're kept secret because when the contents are revealed, uh, it generates an opposition. In a few moments, I will sign the North American Free Trade Act into law. NAFTA will tear down trade barriers between our three nations. It will create the world's largest trade zone and create 200,000 jobs in this country by 1995 alone. This agreement exchanges membership rights for China in the WTO for economic opportunities for America in China, for American businesses and American workers. The agreement we're announcing today includes several important improvements and achieves what I believe trade deals must do. It's a win-win for both our countries. This deal is a win for American workers, for our farmers and ranchers. It will increase exports of American agricultural products. So instead of having a race to the bottom for lower wages and worse working conditions and more abuse of our natural resources, this is a race to the top. It's not just good for our businesses, it's good for our workers. WikiLeaks has had considerable success delaying the TPP and opening up the debate around it and the teaser by releasing the secret draft texts. Your secret, keep me peaceful. Your lies keep me safe. You are satisfied with my ignorance. And you are in control. But we aren't aware. We are anonymous. We do not forgive. We do not.
forget.